It's a first for me. And I've been through a lot in my life. I've done a lot of things. A lot of them I'm not really too pleased about or too proud about, but this is in a class by itself completely. Sixty-five uh, choice items that particularly represent a theme that I've been involved in for decades, which is depicting American heroes. You know, for the last two years, they've been trying to get this show together, and it's finally come to fruition, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's an honor to be standing here with you and all your guests. So thank you so much for all these years. Can I really believe this guy? <laughs> to see these paintings up close, things that I've seen my whole life and things I haven't seen before, is incredible. This is like a walk with your childhood here and seeing all my, all my superheroes. <laughs> I'm really pretty well known in the comic book world. Are you a comic book guy? Yes, I am. Are you sitting down and you're ready for this? <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> there were three guys at the top mm -hmm. of comics. Jack Kirby, mm -hmm. Joe Kubert, mm -hmm. Ollie Wood. Mm -hmm. yeah. All three of them were like family to me. I've worked for Marvel, DC, and a bunch of other publishers along the way. But my total comic book career is predicated on 27 stories. I was in the business for three years. That's lint compared to what many of my associates spent. In a certain way, that made me a kind of bad guy because I got to the top very quickly with experimental type work that the comic area just didn't embrace. It's unbelievable the, the depth and quality of work that this man's had over the last 55, 60 years. I brought surrealism into the comic book world. Op art, pop art. The detail he could put into a small canvas is incredible. Somehow people uh, saw something in it that they liked. Hey Jim, it's George Lucas. Stephen and I have been working on this project. The story, the elements, the characters, but we don't know what he looks like. Can you help us? Getting to see the Raiders of the Lost Ark pieces and know that that inspired the whole tone of that movie is really heartfelt and very amazing. Those are the first four paintings done two years before the movie was made. That character in particular, you know, is, uh, has made a, a huge footprint in American pop culture. That came out in 77. This would have been published in 78. I don't think my work has been out of print in the previous 50 years. And how do I know that? I still get a check from Disney every damn month. Yeah, Thank God. <laughs> Got your blessing. Come on. This represents my past. I'm surrounded by what I did 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. These images belong to my friends and my fans. So to get to see these paintings is a really big deal to me. Uh, to get to spend any time with Jim is a big deal. Bam. I was talking to Dr. Zona earlier, and I said, where can I possibly go from here? And he said, this is it, folks. This is the top. That's why we're so successful here. <laughs> this is one of the most special events in my, in my whole career. There's something here for everyone. Whether they grew up in the age of Sherlock Holmes, and the Lone Ranger are kids who are just going to the movies now and looking at the X-Men and Wolverine and Captain America. And if I can just get one, one to say I was really inspired by looking at this art, I'd love to do one of those. Maybe I can be an artist myself. All of it would have been worthwhile. <laughs>